Hey everyone, I'm Kaylee. I am going to try an experiment today. I'm pretty bad at remembering people's birthdays and anniversaries, so I want to use a memory hack to see if I can memorize a bunch of my colleagues' birthdays. But before I tell you what that is, I want you to test your own memory. Here are eight of my amazing colleagues at Manhattan Prep, along with their birthdays. You have 20 seconds. See if you can memorize them all. Great, we'll come back to this later. The human brain is very good at taking in a lot of data, but not very good at holding on to it. When memorizing a string of numbers, most people can easily hold on to three or four at a time, but almost everyone's working memory falters after six or seven data points. This, by the way, is why we break up phone numbers into three or four digit chunks. Without additional help, the human brain is just not a very efficient data processor. So what is the brain good at? Well, it turns out it's really good at making narratives. Visual, auditory, and especially emotional. So you probably don't remember data points like your eighth grade locker combination, but you probably do remember the feeling of hiding behind your locker when your crush walked by and looking down at your shoes. Or was that just me? The hippocampus, the part of your brain responsible for consolidating short-term and long-term memories, is also the part of our brain that's responsible for spatial memory and navigation. So it's no coincidence that you can remember things better that you can picture visually. So let's go back to my colleagues now. How many of their birthdays can you remember? If you remember two or three, that's pretty typical. And four or five would be really good. Six or seven would indicate that you have excellent working memory. But I'm guessing that no one got all eight right. So this is where my favorite memorization technique comes in. If we want our hippocampus to hold on to lots of pieces of information, we can take each piece of information and tie it to something that we can easily visualize. Ancient Roman and Greek orators called this the method of loci, and they used it to memorize long speeches. In pop culture, a certain detective calls this his mind palace, and he uses it to memorize every clue that he encounters. The idea is this. Take a place that you know really well, your house or your apartment, your school, your office building. Then imagine yourself walking through that place room by room and placing each thing that you want to remember in a specific location in that house. You could do this with the digits of pi, with the words to Hamlet's soliloquy, or with GRE vocabulary words. To help me remember my colleagues' birthdays, I'm gonna picture my childhood home. Here's my system. Every month has its own room in the house. January and February are the coldest months, so they go down in the basement. March is starting to get warmer, so picture March on the staircase leading from the basement to the first floor. Then April is in the front hallway for springtime. And from there, picture warmer months going up and up, getting higher rooms in the house, with August all the way up in the attic where it's hot. September's my birthday month, that's my favorite, so that's out on the porch. October is in the kitchen, November is the dining room, and then December is in the living room around the fireplace for the holidays. So if I want to remember a friend's birthday, I start by picturing them in that room of the house. But that's not enough. We need to memorize the exact date. So start with this. If someone's date is a low number, dates one through 10, I picture them lying down on the ground. If their birthdays are the 11th to the 20th, they're seated in the middle. And if their birthdays are between the 21st and 31st, they're standing up. Now for the exact date, let's rhyme. So let's take my colleague, Grace. Her birthday is August 6th, so she's up in the hot attic, lying on the ground, because it's a low number. Now six, that rhymes with licks, so I picture her licking the floor on the ground. Gross, but very memorable. Dan's birthday is February 18th. February is in the cold basement, and since it's the shortest month, 
It's the smallest room, the basement bathroom. 18 means he's sitting, but in the basement bathroom, that means sitting on the toilet. Sorry, Dan. The most memorable rhyme I can think of for eight is alligator. So Dan's being attacked by an alligator on the basement toilet. Divya's birthday is March 30th. March is on the basement stairs. 30 would be standing up. And a digit of zero, well, that makes me think of superhero. So I picture Divya in a superhero cape standing up, trying to fly up the basement stairs. Here's a hint. If you have two friends with birthdays in the same month, picture them in the same room. Patrick also has a birthday in August, so he's up there in the attic with Grace. His birthday is the 13th, so he's sitting up. We need a rhyme for three. How about B? Let's have him being attacked by bees. All while Grace is still licking the floor. Okay, now that I've demonstrated how it works, you try it. Let's do my birthday. My birthday is September 18th, and we've already seen an 18 before. So think about where to picture me and what I should be doing. Elaine's birthday is March 4th. What rhyme or mnemonic can you think of for four? And can you remember who else was in March whom she could interact with? Now try Ryan, July 5th. Think of where July goes. And what could you use to remember five? One more. Kevin's birthday is November 27th. What room is he in? And what's he doing? What does the seven make you think of? All right, got all those? Great. Now it's time to put your memory to the test. Remember this first set of colleagues? Do you remember any of their birthdays? Okay, now look at the eight that we used our memory palace technique on. How many of these can you remember? So, how did you do? Hopefully you were able to remember a lot more of these than you did on the first set. This memory palace technique, it's powerful, but it's not just for birthdays. Studies show that test subjects, when trying to learn information across a wide variety of subjects, do much better if they visualize the information in a physical place. They do better with recall hours and even weeks and months later. You can use this technique to memorize the periodic table, or even just the names of people that you meet at a party. If you want to make it really memorable, picture it in physical space, but make it emotionally impactful, or silly, or even vulgar. No one has to know. It's your memory secret. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click subscribe and click the bell icon. Then tell us in the comments, what did you use the Memory Palace technique to learn? You can check out other videos on our channel or visit manhattanprep.com to learn more. Bye.